hello and welcome back to another video and i think it's time we talk cost of solar panels so a bit of a sore subject um lots and lots and lots of messages asking how much does it cost so we we will need to caveat it quite heavily um, because it's very unique to your situation um, but what i want to do in this video is take you through how much it cost us to install 20 solar panels and um, the battery system and uh, the inverter so that's what we'll do in this video so let's crack on and go through how much all this has actually cost us and i think now is a good time to mention that the pricing is accurate to um when we were quoted so just be mindful of that there has been huge increases on solar due to demand inflation uh, which we're all aware of so my figures are probably a bit off and i would add um, a bit more uh, now already uh, at this stage now we're installed uh, from when we actually were quoted so please do take that into consideration um, that prices are probably a bit more than what um, is said in this video at this point. So the first thing is how it's laid out on our house. So if you've watched the previous one, um, you'll know we've got 12 on this roof and then 12 down on a roof down there. And then at the far end of the garage, we have our inverter and a battery. So getting cables to the rear of the house is not an easy task, especially when you're so particular like I am and you want them all hidden and nothing on show. So that's sort of the first caveat to this. Um, and that's that. Now, the other thing is depending where you live, you might need planning permission. Fortunately, where we've installed these, we don't, but we did have to speak to planning and they required a hundred pound, uh, which I've included in the total cost, uh, just to review our sort of what we're doing. So with these panels, we've also gone for solar edge optimizers. And what that does is if any point of the roof is shaded, so that panel gets shaded by this ridge here, it separates out that one panel so it doesn't affect the rest of them. Now, each one of them is not cheap, but that's included in the overall cost of the solar panels. Um, they're around 60 pound each. So when you've got 20, it soon adds up. So let's crack on and uh, just go through the cost. So solar panels, not actually that bad, but do make most of the cost up. Now for 20 panels that we've gone for, which are the all black, 400 watt, with bird protection. I don't know if you can see it. Let's get a bit closer. Sorry. Might be able to see it just there on the edge, a bit like a netting, but we need a bird protection. We do have pigeons fly around here a lot uh, and it'd be a nightmare to sort. So to install the solar panels themselves, the equipment came to 6,000 pound. That's including bird protection um, I think bird protection we're knocking up 700 750 something like that so around 5,000 for the actual panels themselves then you've got scaffolding so I'll include a photo but we had scaffolding all across the back here to make it safe with edge protection and then also scaffolding down there um, I took advantage of that and did a few other jobs such as cleaning out the guttering um, cleaning the roof just to make it more cost effective um so what, yeah you're talking nearly seven thousand pound just to get up there to install them and the panels themselves as well as bird protection so let's go into the garage and talk about what's in there because there's a lot more equipment in there and a lot more specifics and where we can caveat a few things and explain a few various situations with that So moving into the garage now this is kind of where the magic happens um, and something I alluded to just a couple of minutes earlier in the video is just where this is located in relation to the actual 
panels on the rear of the house. Not so much the ones on the garage, which are bang above here. But when you think this is the far extremity of where the, um, the solar panels are. So just be mindful of that when, um, when we discuss kind of labor costs and all that, because the cable route was not the easiest. You have to go through a three story house that doesn't have an attic. Um, and the route itself is very complicated, took a lot of time, a lot of sort of discussing with me on how we we're gonna do it. Um, so yeah, just be mindful of that when you think about the labor costs. But to be honest, when we get to it, I don't actually think labor were that bad. But at this point, I think it's worth noting the equipment we picked as well. So as you can see, we've gone for everything Solar Edge. Now, the reason for that is it's all integrated. It all works together. It's got a mind of its own and it can send power wherever it needs to. Now, I believe this is probably not the cheapest system out there and it's probably one of the more dearer systems. You've got Tesla, which probably a bit dearer, um, but I wanted this, I chose this and I requested this of um, Oval Renewables who installed the system. If that's not in your budget or you don't really care, there is cheaper options out there and you don't have to go for this and you don't have to pay this sort of money. I liked the idea of Solar Edge. Um, a lot of research that I did all came back to Solar Edge being probably one of the best out there. Um, I might be wrong, but as far as I'm aware, everyone's installing Solar Edge inverters. Everyone's installing, you know, the Solar Edge um, optimizers. So for me, yes, we've probably paid a premium, but I'm hopeful that it lasts. I'm hopeful that um, the warrant is easy to work with because it's all integrated together. They can remotely access things. So yeah, I thought it's probably just worth noting that that we have probably paid a premium to go for Solar Edge equipment. Um, but there's good reason for it. Let's discuss the equipment in here. So what we have, five kilowatt inverter, solar edge. We have all the bits and bats. So we've got garage array, house array. So the cables come into here and the AC isolator. They're the DC isolators. We have a meter and then we have our um, solar edge, 10 kilowatt battery so if we start with sort of the gubbins the the mind of the the panels themselves so first of all five kilowatt inverter if you have an inverter that's more than 3.68 kilowatts you'll have to get dno approval i believe that's across the board throughout the uk um maybe different maybe just england i'm not sure but that's what we had to do um so We've gone for five kilowatts, so we had to get approval. That approval, although I initially thought it was gonna be knocking up 800 pound, it actually came in at 470 pound. Now, I'm gonna do a video on lessons learned because five kilowatt, although it's perfect for the house, it might not be enough uh, when we talk about cars in the future and where we're at with an electric vehicle, but that's another video. So, inverter itself, 470 pound, just to say that we can have that inverter. Then for the actual inverter itself, all necessary equipment, the mod bus. So that bit of equipment monitors what's going out to the grid, what's coming back in, basically everything that the solar is producing um, and shows it on an app and everything. So I'll, I'll kind of include a little picture there uh, to show you what that does on video. Um, but yeah, all that came in at 1800 pound just for the equipment and uh, just a note for the solar panels, the, the £6,000 were just for the equipment, not the actual insulation. Um, so the gubbins there, again, not bad to say it's the complete mind of the system, um, but yeah, it's not a cheap, cheap do. The battery, so a bit of a discussion point there. So, um, we weren't going to go for a battery to start with um, and solar panels, as I did more and more research, I felt battery you actually needed or we did for our lifestyle um, to because our main production is during the day. We're not always in in the day um, and we're kind of flexible in when we are in and out. Um, so we needed to store that, store that power that we were 
the, or the energy that we were producing without sending it back to the grid because we can't use it again once it's gone. So we decided to go for a battery. Now, a good deciding factor to that was the UK government or England government. Uh, <laughs> I don't know the best way to word that, but there is currently Probably. out there where if you buy solar and um, a battery at the same time and have it installed at the same time, you don't pay VAT. 20% on the price of that is quite a lot. So that was kind of a deciding factor of why we'd go for a battery now. The other thing, when we first started getting quotes, you did pay 5% VAT. The government changed that, so you pay 0% VAT on anything solar related. So we actually saved quite a lot of money just in the period of asking for a design and a quote to actually deliver it. So that was a deciding factor of why we went for a battery now and not down the line. So price of the battery with the 0% saving comes in at about £5,500. So again, not cheap, just the equipment itself. But when we look at the equipment and you can go online and Google how much things are, and I do do that, I cannot buy them separate for less than that. So for me, um, what I've been quoted is pretty reasonable and I really do go through things with a fine tooth comb and make sure the price that I'm paying is um, sort of reasonable. So we've, we've totted up quite a bit there. We've got 6,000, we've got an 1,800, we've got 5,500, we've got you know planning permission at 100 pound, we've got DNO at 460. But what we'll do is we'll head back around the back of the house a um, bit prettier environment than here and uh, let's talk about the total cost. So on to the total cost. Now, you've, at this point, you've probably added it up yourself, but we're around the £18,500 to have all this equipment installed um, and working along with the uh, kind of the support functions of that. Now, one thing I've not mentioned is the labour. Now, we're about £4,000. Now, that is labour. It's all certificates. It's the, you know, the travelling that you've got with that. Um, there's warranties included in that. So there's a lot of other factors. It's not just £4,000 for someone to come and do it. Um, that is very specific to your situation, your insulation. Our insulation took three days for three people. Um, so when you really narrow it down, I think it's pretty competitive and in today's market it's very difficult to get people to come and even quote you so if you think something's expensive sometimes you've just not got a choice I personally don't think that's bad um, our budget started at 10,000 we ended up at 18 and a half so um, just be mindful of that so before we even went for this we knew roughly what the maximum we could spend to make it cost effective we did the sums you know you, you'll have seen not in the last video the video before where we discuss sort of projected returns on this now we at this point are about three weeks in i'm estimating from what i've seen so far we're about five to six year payback um, and that's on today's prices we're not accounting for what we've just found out about october's prices and prices going forward so we're potentially in for an even quicker payback, um, mainly because I have an electric car, but we'll go through that in another video. Um, maybe at the one month mark, we can see how we've got on six month, 12 month, and see how this is working for us. So I think we'll leave the video there. That hopefully gives you all an idea. I've been bombarded with messages on how much it's cost. Um, and I just wanted to kind of break it down and show you each individual portion so you can apply it to your situation. We've gone for a pretty, pretty big system, 18,000. Um, so you're probably going to be able to reduce that down for something you need. Um, for instance, we're producing probably three times what we actually need for the house, but I've got an electric car, so we're topping up the car with the remainder. So take that as you will and apply it to your own situation. But yeah, for me, I think it's pretty good value for money. We've got a very good quality system with good warranties uh, and I hopefully it's gonna last us. And uh, there's a lot of factors to discuss over 
the payback and what you can include um, to account for in that payback. So I hope you found this useful. Please do give it a thumbs up if you have. Pop any questions down below and I'll uh, answer where I can. Um, but yeah, it's not a cheap do, but hopefully it'll uh, return as something really worthwhile going forward. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.